In this video, I'll walk you through the process of creating a consistent character in Comfy UI using the Flux model. The goal is to ensure the character maintains consistent facial features and clothing details across different locations, poses, and interactions with other objects. This tutorial is perfect not only for animators who want full control over their character's appearance and pose for creating keyframes, but also for designers working with static images. That's because this workflow includes extensions for transferring facial features from a reference image and another for copying various clothing details from a reference. Here's my workflow, broken down into several blocks. I've structured it as clearly as possible and will explain each block so you can easily replicate it. You can download the complete workflow on my Patreon, link in the description. Links to all models will be in the description and included as a text node in the workflow itself. You can simply drag and drop the workflow file into your comfy UI environment and it'll open right up. If any extensions are missing and nodes turn red, head to the manager, install the missing nodes, update comfy UI and hit update all. Then restart comfy UI. In the first group of nodes, we'll create the character concept, defining how they look from different angles. The second group of nodes focuses on enhancing facial features. Next up, upscaling. Then we'll crop the image into three separate pictures. In the next group, we'll pose the character, sitting them in a chair. Here, we'll use the IP adapter to achieve maximum likeness to the reference character's appearance and to transfer the look of the chair plus an extension to transfer facial features from a reference portrait. And in the final group, we'll fine tune the clothing details to fully match the character's concept. The selected clothing detail in the settings will be removed and replaced with the one we specify. Let's go step by step. This node toggles the blocks on and off. It's best to enable them one at a time, moving to the next only when you're happy with the previous block's results. For now, I'll disable all groups except the first one, in the first group of nodes, we'll create the character's image from three angles using a prompt and an open pose map. It's critical to place all angles on a single canvas. This helps the program understand it's the same character and strive for maximum consistency in their appearance. Diffusion Model Loader I love the results this Flux model gives. Links to all models are in the description and embedded in the workflow. Dual Clip Model Loader VIE Model Loader in these two nodes, we set the width and height. Here, I'm using my custom-trained LoRa to make it easier to capture the desired look. Positive prompt. It's important to describe all the details clearly and thoroughly here. For example, I start by specifying that I need three angles, front, side, and back. Then I describe the character's appearance, their age, hair, clothing, and specify that it's the era of King Louis XIV after that, I define the style, lighting, white background, and other details. An empty negative prompt. Flux works great with just a positive prompt. Width and height are passed here. Fixed seed goes here. Sampler name, I like using Dias. And the scheduler paired with it, beta. All these nodes are the standard setup for a custom sampler. Apply control net. You'll tweak your own values here. 0.6 worked well for me. Control Net Model Loader. I'm using the Instant X model. Open Pose Map. The bus node acts like a hub. We pass specific parameters here, and then we can call it anywhere in the workflow. This avoids adding loader nodes repeatedly or dragging long, messy lines across the workspace, making the workflow more organized, clear, and visually appealing. We'll assign a variable to this node. Let's call it bus. And here, we add it again. Or here, we pass parameters like the model, VAE, positive and negative prompts from it. Custom Advanced Sampler, Flux Guidance. This controls how closely the neural network follows the prompt. Lower values mean less creativity and more precise adherence to the prompt. Higher values allow more creativity but less precision. Different tasks require different settings. After running a few generations, I got a version that matches how I envisioned my character. Here, I assign a variable to this image since I'll need it in the next group of nodes. I enable the facial enhancement group and navigate to it with the arrow. This is the face detailer extension. Here, we call the bus variable. Using the bus node, we pass parameters, model, clip, VAE, positive and negative prompts. 
face enhancement model? This is an optional node for finer face adjustments. You can skip it and everything will still work. This is the prompt field. You don't need to fill it since the prompt is passed from the previous block. But if you want to emphasize specific facial details, you can add them here. This variable passes the image generated in the first block. The face detailer node with settings, size, seed, CFG, sampler name, number of steps, etc. A node to compare two images, before and after. Let's run the generation. It processes in multiple passes. In my case, two passes. The face has improved significantly. Next, upscaling. Enable this group. We pass the image with the enhanced face here. We assign this variable here. I like this model, but you can use whichever one you prefer. We pass the image here. Upscaling method. Casampler. Data is passed to it from the bus node. Let's run the generation. The detailing has improved. Image save node. Image cropping group. Enable it and navigate. We pass the upscaled image here via a variable, image dimensions. This is the cropping settings node. Let's run the generation for clarity. 800 is the width of the new cropped image. 1,888 is the total image height, which I'm leaving unchanged. Offset along the X and Y axis. Same for another angle. Width and height stay the same, but we adjust the offset. The cropped image and the character's name are passed to the image save node for easy reference later. I set this variable earlier, so we have our character concept, and now we can start creating different frames with the character in various poses and locations. In this block, we'll set the character's pose and use the IP adapter and facial feature transfer extension to make them as close as possible to the reference. We'll also add another object to the scene I've separated the nodes for the IP adapter and facial feature extension into subgroups for clarity. So when I enable one group here, all three related subgroups activate automatically. The setup here is identical to the first block, but all those loader nodes are replaced with a bus node that passes the parameters from there. I'm keeping the LoRa with the same settings to ensure the character's style stays as close as possible to the reference. In the prompt, I kept the character description unchanged, removed the three-angle phrase, and added that the character is sitting in a beige vintage chair. The chair needs a description too. Control net node group with a new pose in the same settings. In the IP adapter, I want to use both the character's reference image and the chair's image. Since the apply IP adapter node only accepts one image input, I need to combine the character and chair images side by side without embedding them. IP adapter model loader and an additional helper model, which you'll need to download. The main diffusion model, IP adapter model and image are passed here. Here's the combined image. The guy sitting in the chair doesn't count. I just like the chair. Ideally, both images should be in the same style. Here the style is somewhat realistic, not cartoony or Pixar-like, but still illustrative. If you add a photo of a sofa, the program will try to render the entire image in a more realistic style, finding a compromise. Resize node, since we need to bring both images to the same scale. 1024 is the size of the larger side. The other side is calculated proportionally. Preserve proportions is selected here. Node for merging the two images into one. We also resize here. I keep the weight and apply IP adapter at one point. So, the data passes through the IP adapter, and before reaching the sampler, it needs to go through the facial feature transfer nodes from the reference image. The extension is called PULID. Head to the developer's page. Copy the code. Go to the custom nodes folder. Type CMD in the address bar to open the terminal in that folder. Paste the copied code and hit enter. All necessary folders are created. Follow another link and download the model. Place it in the Models Pullid folder, then restart ComfyUI. Here's this group. Load the reference here, preferably a close-up portrait for the best results. Apply Pulid, where data from supporting nodes is received, and you set the influence weight, start, and endpoints. Here's the result. Using a closer-up reference will make the facial features match the sample even more accurately. Keep in mind that lighting and the character's expression have changed and high detail became lower due to the image size, but the features are captured well.
Oh, and it pulled in the hairstyle along with the face. The clothing details are very close, but there are some nuances. In the next block, we'll ensure they match the original perfectly. The extension is called Try Off. Go to the Developers page. You'll see this extension can not only dress the model in clothing, but also remove it for display purposes. Installing this extension isn't straightforward, so we'll take the simplest route. Follow the link to the workflow examples. Download the examples. I use the second one. Drag it into your Comfy UI environment. Go to the Manager, install missing nodes, and restart Comfy UI. The program starts downloading and installing stuff. It takes a while, so be patient. Refresh the page and everything works. Back to the workflow. Enable this block. Preview of the image we're passing via a variable from the previous group. This is the image we'll edit. Load the reference here. Node for generating a mask based on the selected parameters. You can choose a body part or clothing detail to take from the reference, even the face. But we have a separate extension for the face, though you can try this one too. I'll edit only the upper clothing. The program will generate the mask automatically. Model loader. We pass the image dimensions here. Originally, they were inside the node, but I exposed them to connectors to input externally. Using the image size retrieval node. Number of steps, guidance, and seed. Prompt field. The program auto-generates a mask, showing the area to be replaced with the reference image. Notice how neatly it avoids the hair and hands. Run the generation and watch the console as it progresses. It loads three required models first, so it takes a bit. Subsequent generations in this session will be faster. Here's the result. Let's compare it to the reference. The reference image is passed from here and resized to match the edited image's dimensions. So, we'll compare it with the original reference. Notice how accurately the clothing details are transferred. For example, the sleeve has gold trim, and it's rendered perfectly. Also, the vest's edge, buttons, and other details. I'm using a fixed seed here because I found a good result, but you should experiment with different seeds. Some will capture clothing details better than others. You can skip the auto-generated mask and use your own. In that case, write a prompt specifying what you're changing. So, the final version. With this workflow, I want to create several keyframes of the character, like reading a book, placing it on a table, leaning back with hands behind head, standing up, etc. Then I'll combine them using Frame Pack, which interpolates between keyframes for smooth animation. I have a video on this topic, link at the top. I'll record more since this engine has been improved. This workflow gives us full control over the character's pose, appearance, and composition. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.